Now, wouldn't it be something if there was one simple fix to help with all of your dog's challenges, whether it be a dog that jumps up on guests or barks out the window or pulling on leash counter surfing, or even a puppy struggling with crate training or a puppy nipping? Well, what if I told you that doesn't necessarily have to be a dream? Wally, can you place? Yes, good boy! In today's video, I'm going to, you can free, I'm going to be sharing how we taught Wally the place cue and how this can help with everything I just talked about and then some. And at the end, I will be sharing the tools and the products that made it much easier. So let's just jump into this video, right? Now. Using the place cue, which is a designated spot for my dogs to go to when I ask them, is extremely helpful because this is how this one cue, this one fix, <laughs> look at that grumble, is how I manage my dog's undesirable behavior that I struggle with at times, whether it be barking or destructive behavior or jumping up, counter surfing, you name it. And I'll show you how to do this in just a moment, but I wanted to start off by explaining what the place cue was, which is a fundamental cue that will make most everything you do with your dog easier. It will give your dog more structure and routine, which most dogs crave and most dogs do not get enough of. Sometimes I even struggle keeping up with that, which is why I love this. So when I ask my dogs for a place cue, there's really just a few simple rules. First being, you can't get off of this unless you're given the free or release cue, which I'll teach you how to do that and this in just a moment. Secondly, you can kind of do whatever it is you want to do on it within reason, meaning the dog or Wally can lay down, sit or stand up while on there. He just can't excessively bark or whine. He can't be jumping up or anything crazy like that. And he has to have at least three out of four paws on it. Probably my favorite part of this cue is how simple it is to teach. A lot of times I've heard people talking about luring their dog with treats or food to get on the place cue. I've actually found that it's more effective to put your dog in a position where they want to get on the place mat or place bed like I have here, and then rewarding them with verbal praise, treats, food, or even a toy when they choose to do it on their own, just like this. So all I did when we first started with Wally, keep in mind, we started working with him on this at like nine weeks old. For those of you who followed, since he was a small little guy, he's still a puppy, really. Uh, we started working on this right away. And all we did in the beginning is I stood right next to the place cue and I just waited. You can see Wally's right here and he's looking at me because he's like, I know how to do this, but what do you want? Like, it's so weird for you because usually you'll ask me to go on. But this is all I do. Right now is step one of teaching the place cue. I stand next to it and I don't ask for anything. I don't lure him on it or anything like that. Some people find success in that. I personally haven't. I want this to be something that's ingrained into his mind as like a fundamental, almost instinctual response, which is why I want him to make the choice and the decision on his own to actually get on the, the place cue. So I stand here and I wait. Yes, and as soon as he got his first paw on there, I gave him the marker cue, which is Y-E-S, and I follow with a reward in the beginning. I don't always rely on treats, but in the beginning, it does help for most dogs or toys or even their food during mealtime. Good boy. And as long as they continue to stay on the place bed or the place mat, whatever you're using, I continue to reward. That's the key. I'm using some 100% uh, beef treats and fish treats right now. I'll show you my favorite treats at the end of the video. Good boy, Wally, yes. And this is all it is. If they get off of it on their own, which in the beginning they will, no big deal. I don't reward, I don't reprimand, anything like that. I just wait till they get back on it and then I reward and I get excited. Yes, good boy, good job. I was slow with giving the treat in the beginning, excuse me for that. I like to follow my treat right when I give my marker Q Y E S. And in case you're not familiar, my marker Q, which is Y E S, it's similar to people that use like a clicker. Um, I've conditioned him to learn that Y E S, when I say that, that whatever he is doing is what I want him to do. And the way I load that, or the way that I back that up and make the Y E S meaningful, is on or off the mat, like just other times of the day, I'll just say, yes, give him a treat. Yes, give him a treat. And I'm not, I'm not automatically giving a treat, like right when you're saying yes. And over time, you practice that enough, just the pure action of you saying why yes 
will create positive association for your dog. So that way you don't always have to rely on food. Good boy, Wally. Yes. Now he's going to stay on here because obviously we've practiced this. Uh, Wallace, you can free. Good boy. But let's just show you what it looks like. You can stand next to it. Yes, go boy. As soon as they get on it, go ahead and start rewarding. We're not looking. There you go. We're not looking for perfect all the way on, all the way off. We want to, in the beginning, reward them for just making that first initial contact on. And again, the key is if they choose to stay on the mat or the place bed, I continue to reward. Now, if your dog is having struggles getting on the mat, yes, good boy, you could try walking around it like so, because they'll kind of look at you and go, okay, I'm interested in what mom or dad is doing, but I don't know what's going on. They usually start walking around. And as soon as they get one paw, like making contact, it's yes. And you get that right away with a treat, like really, really quickly. You, the dog's attention span is so sticking short that you've got to be quick with the treats or the toy or whatever reward you're using very, very quickly. Then if your dog is still struggling to actually get on the mat, you can use something lower to the ground. When Wally was a puppy, we just used a thick pad, which again, I'll have it linked to my shop page linked below and talk about it at the end. Um, eventually though, we upgraded him to an elevated bed for more challenging scenarios like having guests come over because I found over time having something that was different than a standard dog bed uh, and was elevated like this one made it more intentional. Like he knew like when I'm on this, like this means business, even if there's something way more exciting over there, this was just a more intentional use of a bed. But you can in the beginning just use a towel. You can use a small blanket. Uh, you can use a dog bed. You can use whatever you want to be the place cue. And actually, I'll tell you in just a moment why that's actually so valuable. The place cue is not tied to the specific item they're on. The place cue is tied to the word. So after you've really nailed it on your initial bed that you're going to use or mat, then over time, gradually, you can start using that cue on other items like a chair or a couch. And practice in the same way. Dogs will pick it up really quick at that point. And it may take a while and that's okay. I really was tempted in the beginning to take treats and lure him on it, but that didn't that doesn't teach him anything because dogs learn by choosing to do a behavior and then getting positive reinforcement for doing the behavior. And it's going to be more ingrained in their systemic responses to their environment if they learn to do this by making a conscious decision to get on it on their own versus you luring them. Will it make the initial process a little slower? Sure, but will it make it more effective down the road? It has for my dogs, so that's why I like to do it that way. Good boy, and it also, you guys know, I'm all about team no dog bowl, which means that during meal time, we don't like to use just plain dog bowls. What we like to do is work with our dog during meal time to give them enrichment and mental stimulation or give them puzzle type toys or slow feeders instead of a plain dog bowl. So do this during meal time. Hold their dog bowl of food, stand by the crate or by the playpen. Don't lure them, but just stand next to it and wait patiently and quietly and they'll look at you and go, what the heck do you want? Eventually they'll get a little impatient and they'll move around and as soon as they get one paw, just even on the edge of the mat, yes, get that treat or food. Reward, reward, reward. Now once you get to this point where you're like, okay, my dog gets on the place mat or the place bed and they're staying there for the most part, you can start to make it more challenging so that it will be more effective in challenging times. For example, if a guest comes in the house or somebody rings on the rings the doorbell or whatever it might be that triggers your dog, that they actually stay on this, the way to get to that point is to practice gradually and slowly over time, making this more difficult while always making sure that your dog is successful. And I did not add the word place to this cue until he started offering the behavior of always going on the mat. You know you're doing it right when after a few sessions or maybe even in the first session, your dog just leaps onto that mat with excitement because you have positively conditioned them being on it by rewarding them with their favorite things, toys, play, treats, or food. Every time they get on it, as soon as they make contact, that is when I start adding the place cue. Then to make it more challenging, you can start by just taking one step back 
Coming back, yes, good boy. You notice that I did not give a treat or anything when I was back here, like good boy, and then throw him a treat or anything like that. I waited till I came back here. Another pro tip is when you do release them, and I'll talk a little bit more about how I taught that, is I only release them when I'm right next to the mat because I want them to know that they are never going to be able to get off of this until I'm physically right here. I don't want them to ever mistake something I'm doing or saying when I'm five feet away to mean release or free. That way I don't have as much worry about them getting off of it if I'm farther away from them, let's say getting a package that's being delivered. And then you can walk around them, maybe have them behind you, Yes, good boy, come back and then go on this side. And again, do this slowly. You may be able to only take one step at a time and that's okay and then come back. Always make sure that your dog is successful and go with their own rate. Another thing that you can do to make it more challenging is by putting their toys around that they might wanna go get with. And that actually leads me to using toys and other distractions as they get more used to this and you're practicing quite a bit to make it more challenging. That way you can actually take this mat and go into the backyard and then go into the front yard. I use a leash, of course, like a long lead. My favorite long lead is, shop, is linked below my shop page. That way if they do get off, you don't have to worry about them getting away. Um, but if you add more distractions, you're gonna be more successful. And again, this all counts as a brain game. Speaking of toys, guess who just got their Super Chewer and Bark Box subscription in the mail? And as you guys always request, I'm gonna do a quick unboxing of these and show you how I use these with the Place Cue. Yes, good, wait. Oh, did I little grumble? He's, he's like, oh, I wanna play with those. I'm gonna give him a treat for being so good. There we go. What I gave him is one of the Bark Box uh, treats. It's just 100% beef bites. That's it. Nothing else in the ingredients. But um, I have two different ones. So the super chewer are made for more of the super chewer. So if you're an aggressive chewing dog, that's excellent. And what these are, in case you're not familiar, is they're monthly subscription boxes that are customized to your dog based on their chewing ability and their size, free shipping. And they have unique themes every single month. This month is a Halloween theme, lick or treat, which is so cool. So for the super chewer, and yes, I do have special codes for you in my shop page link below. They do give you exclusive, most aggressive, unique offers for my audience because you guys are that amazing. Um, oh yes, good, good job. Look at him, he's very tempted to get up. So I'm reinforcing, yes, good job. For him keeping, a, making a good decision of staying on the mat. And I wanna talk about a few reasons why I love these toys specifically. Uh, one is they come with these little tags and these tags have some special important information. One being the safety notes, like how to properly give this toy or chew to your dog. It's really important to me because a lot of toys, they don't give instructions and people don't necessarily know how to use them correctly. BarkBox Super Chewer are really dedicated to that. Plus they give you information about how to play with the toy as well as the features so you get the most out of it. This is a rip and reveal, which are one of my favorites. Um, and that means that if they're even able to get this outside part off, look at this eyeball, that's so funny. There's another toy in here. So it's actually a two in one toy. Yes, there you go. Just for being such a good boy, you get that. Yes, good boy. This next one is so cute. This is the Ghoulie Pop. So it's kind of a harder plastic. Again, this is from the Super Chewer box. Very cute. And this one's my favorite easily because I, unpopular opinion, love candy corn. This is stinking cool. Um, I love that it's a harder rubber, it squeaks. You could use this as a fun, bouncy toy. So again, I love going through these. Look at him and how good he's being. Yes, good job. I'm gonna give him a treat for that even though he has a toy. Yes, because what I'm doing is I'm reinforcing his choice to stay on the placemat. Let's say you guys are sitting at dinner and you usually have a dog that begs. You can start in the beginning with having your placemat like this near the dinner table, not like right next to it, but fairly close in the beginning. Eventually you can move it further away. And then as your dog chooses to stay on it while you guys are eating, you can reward them with toys or praise or even treats while they choose to stay on it. I, this is what I mean by practicing it. Or if you're watching Netflix and they're staying on it just like right here, continue to reward them while they're on it in the beginning stages for the first, honestly, several weeks to a few months to really reinforce the positive association with being on that map. Because here we go, I'm gonna go over the bark box. I want him 
to have more joy and satisfaction from choosing to stay on that mat than getting off and trying to get one of these toys, which is challenging to achieve if you don't practice it. So that's why I want you to practice. Yes, good boy. Look at him, he wants to get up. This next one is the Bark Box. Again, these are still gonna have the same um, different monthly theme every month, free shipping, and you get the special offer as well in these in my shop page below. But these ones are softer toys. Okay, you guys. Ah, I'm not gonna show you my favorite one first. Okay, so the first one is the Smashing Pumpkin, which is so on theme. I love that there's different elements. So you've got the crinkle, the flat, and then you've got this uh, pumpkin, which is like a ball. You can also, again, this comes customized to your dog. So when Wally was a puppy, he got the puppy-sized ones and they were so small, it's cute. But now we've upgraded because he's getting so big. I'm gonna save the best for last. The next one is the Smell My Feet, which I think is hilarious. So this is a nice little soft toy. Um, there's another toy inside of here. So if you see here, it says there's toy inside. So again, you get another two in one, which is a lot of fun. Now, when I first saw this, this is the other one. I thought that this was a marshmallow, which I thought was cool, because I love marshmallows. No, can you guess what this is? Comment below. Oh my God, it's so funny. <laughs> oh, it's upside down. Toilet paper, look at this poo. <laughs> Barkbox has, okay, here we go. So this is how I handle a situation when it comes off. I'm not gonna reprimand, I'm not gonna say anything, I'm not even gonna ask for the PLACE again. Bop, 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 bop. Yes, good boy. I'm not gonna reward with a treat for that. Um, so that's how I handle those situations when they get off. I'm glad that we did that. It was the toilet paper that sent him over the edge. Hey, we went over six toys and he stayed through all of them except for that. I'll give him a win for that. Good job, Wally. Um, but that's how I handle those situations. When they get off, I don't freak out. I don't reward him um, when he gets back on other than my YES. I just have him get back on there. And then when he, yep, yes, good boy. When he gets back on and he sits like that and just offers a more calming behavior, I'll give a reward. No big deal, we just move on. It's actually good if your dog makes mistakes because then they learn that there's no value. When he got off, he didn't get the toy. When he got off, he didn't get a treat when he came back on um, until he was on it for a little bit and showed calming behavior. If I were to have given him a treat as soon as he got back on after getting off without being released, that could start teaching him that if he, got, if he gets off on his own, that he's gonna get a treat right away when he gets back on, which I don't want him to learn. Anyways, these are a lot of fun. If you're looking for ways to interact with your dog and have fun new toys to play with them, I am a big fan. I get both of them because I love all of them. And big thanks to BarkBox for sponsoring this and supporting our mission to save all the damn dogs by empowering and inspiring pet parents to do more with and for their dogs like we're doing today. Now, let's talk about another way that you can make the place cue much more enjoyable and a stronger hold, which is taking whatever toys that you have. I'm just gonna use these. Yes, good boy. Oh, bop, 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 bop. I'm not using his name with all the toys down. Yes, good boy. Oh, yes, there you go. And you don't really want to practice adding in distractions until they've really mastered the concept of being on the place mat or bed, which can take several weeks for dogs. But this that was a good, you know, I want to show you guys, I get a lot of comments that um, I'm gonna spread these toys out, that my dogs are so well behaved, your dog can never be like my dogs. Yes, good boy, I rewarded him for making a good choice. And I really want to try and show you guys, my dogs are not, well, they are perfect, but <laughs> in terms of like knowing every cue and being like obedience trained for trials and competitions, my dogs are pet dogs and we're just here to show you what works for us. Um, and I like to show you the good and the bad because that's reality. Anyways, so this is a good <clears throat> game where you can set their toys out. You could start with one. Yes, good boy. And then what I like to do is stand by the place mat or place bed and reward him with something of even more value than the toys. Yes, good boy. For making the conscious decision of not going towards these. Eventually you can get to the point where you're throwing toys around. Yes, good boy. I don't think he even saw that and then continuing to reward. You can also randomize the reward between verbal praise, treats, their food from mealtime. This would be a great activity to do during mealtime, uh, giving them a favorite toy if they're not food motivated, but you can kind of roll it around. 
Yes, good boy. And see that focus on me? That's huge. I'm a little slow in getting the treat out. Forgive me. I'm not perfect, but that's okay. Um, we're progressing, making. So what I want to do. Up, 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 up. Yes, good boy. So I really want to get him back on the placemat right away so he doesn't get the chance to get any joy once he gets off. Because if he were to jump off of this and run and grab a toy and play with it even in a few seconds, that could start teaching him that once he gets off, he can get something more fun. So let's move this one around because it was a trigger. Yes, good boy for staying on. And then gonna move it. Yes, good boy, yay! I know, I'm so slow with the treats, but I'm just showing you real life, like how I work on this. You could be doing this while you're watching TV. Good boy, I'm gonna throw a couple more things. Yes, good job, you saw him make that conscious decision. This is what I mean by not luring your dog to do everything. Um, sometimes that can work. But again, when your dog practices making decisions for themselves and then getting rewarded by making good decisions, this is the kind of behavior you get. And then you can get to the point where you walk away, kind of moving things. You also know that I have not asked him for the PLACE ever since I asked it for the first time. I don't repeat it. That's another cue that I, or another tip or hack. And it's gonna throw it away. Yes, good boy, Wally, yeah! And you see this time, I just did like a verbal praise. Good boy, yeah! He's like, oh, that's not treats, but I like to keep things random. And that's my other hack, which is, here you go, you can have a toy for being so good, is when I give rewards, again, this is after I've progressed a little bit, is sometimes I'll give one treat, sometimes I'll give five treats, like a one after another consecutively as a jackpot, sometimes I won't give a treat, um, and sometimes I'll give a treat like every third time, and this just keeps him expecting, eagerly paying attention to me, it keeps him more engaged. You can practice this as like long distance, like you can get to the point where you're like 15 steps away from him and then reward him for staying on there. Oh, that one squeaks. Did you find a squeaker? Yes, go boy. And now what he's learning is just because he's on there and all of his toys are down here, doesn't mean that being on there is bad. What he learned is every when I stay on here, I get treats, I get food, I get fun squeaky toys, I get attention. And this is how he's going to want to stay on here so that eventually when you practice people coming over to your house, he will associate this as a really strongly positive place. So that's why I, <laughs> This is what you want. You want to get to the point where they offer the behavior of getting on here. And yes, this blanket is linked below. Isn't it so stinking cute? It has dogs on it. Um, but I love this bed specifically because it has the mesh material here. So in the winter, it's nice and warm or cool for him. And it's also um, easy to clean. Whilst free. <laughs> He's like, but I love it on here. This is what right looks like. I want to show them something. I love this because it's light in terms of weight. It comes completely assembled. And look at this. Oh yeah. I bet you've never seen this before. It folds in half. So it's easy to store if you're not using it. You can put it under the couch in a closet under a bed. Pretty fantastic. What's really incredible about teaching this to your dog is it really helps you to I'll show you how it can open really easily. You just open it, open it. Oops, I have walls. Push it down. He gets right on it. I didn't ask for anything. Yes, good boy. You want this one? Okay, let me take the tags off. So I love this because once they really get the concept, the actual thing that they're laying on doesn't really matter. So one thing I've actually used place for is while he gets nervous around other dogs, it's something we're working on when we're on leash. And one thing I've done is if we've been near a park and a dog is approaching us and I can't get out of the way easily, I've put him on the place cue on a bench or a patch of grass that's kind of separate from the rest of the park. And what that did is that made him feel safe because he knows that when I put him on a place like this, he's also not going to be harassed. And what I mean by that is when we have guests come over, let's say they have young children, he, I always make sure that the young children never climb on this, are never able to access him on this. If we have people over that maybe he doesn't want to be around, that doesn't happen, but let's just say it did, I would never let them kind of get in his face or get in his space when he's on the place. This is his safe space, right? Like similar to a crate. 
Um, so I want him to feel completely secure, comfortable, and happy on here so that, again, if we're out and about, he gets nervous, or let's say we're camping or whatever, and I have his place bed or there's a bench nearby or something that's a little elevated, I can ask him for a place on that. And instead of barking and freaking out and feeling scared, he can actually feel more secure because we've practiced that when you go in place, I'm gonna take care of you. I'm not gonna let anybody crawl all over you. Nothing bad's gonna happen to you. Only good things happen to you. Here, this also helps if you have somebody coming over, uh, let's say a guest or family member, when they're first coming over and when they come inside, the rule is the dog cannot get off of the place until they've calmed. And in the beginning, you might need to stand right next to them and have a leash, of course, to kind of keep them um, in this area and then continue to reward them with high value treats, praise or toys to stay on the mat when you have a guest come over. But also on the same note, the guest can't interact with the dog until the dog is released and they're freed off of here and both people are calm and situated. If you have somebody come to the front door unexpectedly, like a package, instead of trying to get a leash on your dog or putting them in the back room, you could put them on the place queue. If you have a dog that's having hyperactivity issues, destructive issues, they're jumping up, just a lot of energy, this is a brain game. If you practice this where you take their toys and you put it all around the place queue and reward them for staying on here without saying leave it or anything like that, you literally just ask for a place after they've learned the concept, you put their toys all around, you toss them all around, and if they stay on here, you reward them. That is a brain game. You can do that during mealtime. Remember, mental stimulation is far more tiring to a dog and stimulating and calming and relaxing than physical exercise alone any time of the day. So giving them a challenge and a job like that is huge. You know, if you're gonna go take a shower and having your dog on the place cue while you do that, and you know, where you, and so you can still keep an eye on them, of course. Um, is really helpful to kind of give them a little brain game because when they're on this, yes, they're relaxed, but as you get more advanced, this is a job which dogs love, right? Like they love feeling productive, just like you and I, and most dogs don't get enough act mental activity and brain games and enrichment. This is an easy way to do this. Let's say you feed one of those stuffable toys, which I have a ton linked to my shop page below that I love. We can put their food inside a toy and they have to kind of get it out. Um, you can do that on here. Instead of just giving it to them on the floor or you know, wherever, you give it to them on here and this starts to create, make this a super, super exciting place. If you have a dog that's barking out the window, when they go to bark at the window, have them go to a place instead. Or if you have a puppy that's struggling with puppy biting or puppy uh, crate training issues, you can ask your puppy for a place. I mean, obviously this is after you train it to them, but we started with Wally when he was like nine, 10 weeks old and he caught on really quickly. We did it during meal time. You probably saw all over my Instagram uh, when he was smaller, but if they are overly biting, which I have a puppy biting video right here on more steps as well as linked below for puppy biting, but this is one of the tools you can do because it gives them something else to do. And then when they're on it, give them a chew from their bark box or super chewer to actually chew on and help with their teeth instead of chewing on your arms and feet. Or if you have a puppy with crate training issues, once you positively condition this and make this a fun, exciting place, move it closer to the crate. Uh, I've had a lot of people have success with having their crate here and then bringing the place bed right next to it and then eventually putting the place bed or place mat inside the crate while you're training your dog to be excited about being in the crate and it really creates a positive association because they've already learned to love this and there's no walls, my favorite crate is linked below. So with that, uh, I wanna thank BarkBox and Super Chewer again for being a longtime supporter of everything we're trying to do here. It's honestly a dream come true. I've been a huge fangirl of that company since before. Um, I really started doing a lot on social media, so it means a lot. Also guys, I do have brand new merch. It's linked below, so check it out. Now, if you want to learn how I keep my dog's teeth clean, which is absolutely important, for longevity and heart health, click the video right here. Or if you want to see more brain game hacks and hacks to tire my dogs out quickly, click the video right here. And don't forget to click that subscribe button. I hope you have a beautiful